take our pliers and we run them kind of diagonal on it this way first and get it to twist so rubber becomes bonded to the rest of it and then try pulling it further back if it doesn't come off do the Chinese finger trap where you pull up at the front and that'll pucker it up and get it to come off just take it and just point it down and drain this off we're going to check the jetting later so that's why I'm doing it so what happens if you pull this off and you haven't turned the fuel off it just keeps dribbling everywhere it's messy and then you're breathing gas fumes and you won't get as good work done because you'll be high on gas nobody wants that at this point you're free to take the gas tank off so grab it I usually grab it up front here and back here so I'm at each corner slide it back take it off and you look in there you can see it's got two little things here and on the other side right there um, that go on to grommets so we'll just slide it backwards you don't pull it up you pull it backwards and it'll come off so it's got a custom pad here anyway you can see now we've got more than enough access to adjust the valves so we're going to take our access caps off and then we're also going to um, pull out the plug on the front of here so that we can check the timing you pull this bottom one off okay you can't see what I'm talking about this is the inspection hole where you check what the timing is this is the access hole where you're able to crank the motor over because this doesn't have a kick start it's nice to be able to rotate the motor here we'll rotate I'll show you more detail on that when we go to adjust the valves up here in the meantime you can go ahead and take all these caps off I'll wait for you just push pause the size for these is 24 millimeter it's kind of an oddball size just break them free and then pull them out by hand they're not super tight and they shouldn't be rusted on there too bad one of those things that does get serviced quite a bit about every I'd say 10,000 miles is good You'd probably even do it more than that just depending on how hard you ride if you're just cruising around every 10,000 miles is probably adequate talking real world not repair manual says but my repair manual says I ain't talking about that, I'm talking about the real world. Alright, make sure that your O-rings stay in there. You can see that this one bailed out. So, just make sure that you get them where they need to be. They should be kind of hard to hold on to on account of they're so hot. As your engine's warmed up, if you it, if it went slow or took too long. Uh, <laughs> oops. Not that I messed up, but oops that it's not hot when you're doing it. Because you may have to do it again. But it doesn't hurt. Practice makes perfect. Do it a few times, you'll be alright. Alright, so now we're going to go down and pull these plugs down here. That top one, the inspection one's a 5mm. The other one I want to say is 10, is what it is. Not right? Yeah, 10. It's just, I've been into the CRF 450 so long, I just don't do these big red pigs anymore. Just never see them. I think I've owned six or seven of these. Well, if you count an NX650, back in 89, 88, they did a bike called the NX650. And I had one of those. That was one of my favorite bikes I've ever had. Just absolutely loved that thing. It looked like a sport bike, like a sport touring bike, but it was based on this with our FEC engine. It was a six millimeter. This happens. All right. When you go to tighten these up, they got rubber O-rings, so you don't have to worry about killing them. This one's staying in there. Just leave that one in if it stays in. If I recall, those stay in pretty good. There you go. Now we've got access you want to see in there. I'll show you. There'll be a mark that says T on it. We'll want to adjust this to top dead center and then check it. When you look in here, you can see that you've got a retaining nut it's 10 millimeters and then a regular screwdriver and then you got to get into that with your feeler gauge usually I'll come in from the corner here I'll have them bent over got a couple of them that are bent just for doing this and it's the same on the front nothing too fancy or too complicated so usually what I'll do is an open end wrench I'll break them with a six point socket first by break I mean loosen them and then uh, we'll check it with the feeler gauges Using a flashlight, um, you can see that there's a line in the top there. And you see the little T in the bar? 
you'll see a line go by as you rotate it counterclockwise and then you'll see an, another line and then an F and then a line and a T so the one next to the T is the one that you put it on for top dead center there's a bolt you'll be turning it by the 14 millimeter um, all that does is it lines it up so that you have it in one position that works for everything um, but you want to get it to where this can wiggle up and down and this can wiggle so that they don't have tension on them you could rotate it such that these aren't pushed down just so that they're uh, to a point where they're they have the gap because the gap will be consistent when the lobe is not on it you know as far as the camshaft goes so I'll throw you in the tripod and we'll show you how to adjust this thing I can tell already that these are super loose these are supposed to be 0.10 millimeters and it's supposed to be 0.12 give or take plus or minus 0 0.02 millimeters and uh, they're a mess intakes always supposed to be tighter and exhaust is supposed to be looser because it's hotter or whatever and you get, need to be able to get rid of the exhaust gases uh, efficiently so anyway we'll show you how this works okay so here's our first one and it's the same for all of these so I'm just going to show you the one this is an intake so it should be 0.10 millimeters and you're going to find that on your gauges it doesn't say exactly 0.10 it's going to like this one says 0.102 millimeters you can see that bottom number um, and that's why there's a variance that you can do it by as I slide this in and out it slides super super easy these are actually 12 aren't they 12 millimeter so you crack that loose gently you don't want to mess stuff up too crazy and then you take your screwdriver and then tighten it down onto the feeler gauge just so that it's snug what I do is I um, kind of relax my fingers on the screwdriver and just tighten it down till it's just snug I'm not trying to press a ding into the feeler gauge I'm not trying to crush it I want to maintain that gap but it should have a light drag so if you stop and start again it should feel kind of hard to get it started again it should kind of stick um, so that one's done uh, we'll show you how to do an exhaust valve it's going to be pretty much the same process for this one we're going to do 12 and the nearest gauge that I have says uh, 0.127 and that's okay because we've got plus or we could be at uh, 0.10 or we could go 0.14 it wouldn't matter it's essentially 13 is what it is if you're into rounding and that fit, fits in there it slides good if I stop it locks up so that one needs no adjustment whatsoever so I'll reach over the bike and check the other side and as I do this, you want to make sure that the angle isn't causing you to get a false reading. But it looks like both of my exhaust valves are just fine. That's normal. Um, usually you just have to do the intake ones. In this case, we had to do them a lot. So then we'll go to do the other side here. The bikes have come such a long way. I mean, back in the late 80s, I was riding stuff like this. And it's funny because you could ride anywhere you wanted to. There wasn't any of that watershed bull crap they fed us in 94 the Clinton administration wilderness area stuff I think he just didn't like my state because my state never ever votes for Democrats They're real conservative and so we just got trashed all the state parks got made national parks and outlawed all this crap everywhere and gave nuclear secrets to China I mean he was just you know when he wasn't getting he wasn't fooling around with Monica Lewinsky and getting chilled out. He's doing all kinds of crap that was just New World Order esque. Bushes and the Clintons, man, they're the two families. You gotta get rid of that. I don't know why I'm putting this in the video. Anyway, that's it. We're done. Our valves are all in spec. We are looking good. So I'll just throw all this crap back together again. That explains why we had so much noise. I mean, you could hear these before we even did the video. I showed you that. I didn't measure them yet or anything, but isn't that something? Like I said, when you tighten these down, you want to put a little oil on them, just like an oil filter. Not a lot, or it'll seep out and it'll make it look like they're leaking. Um, these already had oil all over them. I didn't wipe them off for that reason. The rubber can grip and tear and have all kinds of issues if you try to do it dry 
Ask your wife, she knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, this one's a tough one to get to. These are really soft plugs. I don't know if they're magnesium or aluminum, but they're just really soft, so be gentle with them. Throw in our plugs down low. Make sure your O-ring stays in there. You don't want to cross thread this. You really don't want to cross thread this. Just go slow. Don't over torque it. Well that's that. It's time to put the tank back on. If you'll recall, it's got these grommets. Make sure these didn't fall off on the ground. Make sure they're still on there. Get that big fat washer and get our screw in there. I'll get the washer in because it kind of sneaks in under these. Alright, well you get the idea. Same as the tear down. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.